This video is part of a video series where I will be discussing mistakes of investing. I personally believe that preservation of capital should be the first rule of investing and hence learning how not to lose money is more important than learning how to make money. Hello investors, my name is Ujwal and I'm the founder of Wealth Culture. He started Wealth Culture with the intention of helping retail investors in their long-term investing journey. Over the years, I have personally seen a lot of retail investors end up making losses in equity markets cycle after cycle, basically repeating the same mistake again and again. Wealth Culture intends to foster a culture of long-term investing, thus enabling retail investors to benefit from the beautiful art and science of investing. Before I go ahead, couple of disclaimers from my side. I am not SEBI registered. All stocks discussed in this video are not buy or sell recommendations. They are merely used as examples to explain a concept. I may or may not be holding positions in these companies directly in my personal portfolio. Also, I want to declare explicitly that all my videos will be focused on long-term investing, which is essentially we are talking about a period of one year at least as holding period. So let's get started. First mistake, which is retail investors buying into good quality companies, but at super high valuations. And that is called buy at any price investing. Now, how do you identify a good quality business? Most likely, you already know their names. Companies like Pedilite, Page Industries, Asian Paints, HDFC, Kotak fall into that bucket. These businesses have good ROE and ROCE, which is return on equity and return on capital employed. They have a huge market opportunity for them to grow or they could be part of new emerging sunrise sectors. They show consistent growth rate, deliver improving margins year on year, have very low debt, which is leverage, and is run by honest and capable management and board. And because these businesses have a proven track record, they continue to trade at premium valuations. Having identified these good businesses, how much premium should you pay for these stocks as an investor? Is it fine to buy these stocks at any valuation? Buy at any price as they say? Let us evaluate one such high quality stock to understand how its valuation has changed through its life. What you're seeing in front of me is the P chart of Page Industries over its lifetime since its listing. As you can see, the P of the company was about 10x in 2008 and it kept on rising till 2018 when it peaked at about 100. After which it saw some correction and reverted to its lifetime mean of 52.2. With the recent COVID, the market has seen a huge bull run. And so has this stock where it has touched a PE of 140 and ever since has corrected also with now trading at a PE of about 100. Post 2015, if you look at, Page Industries has thrice presented, presented as the opportunity to buy the stock at a PE of 50x. Let us now try to understand why you should not be buying Page Industries at a PE of 100x. Now let's look at the chart for example. So in somewhere in August 2018, the price to equity earnings of the company was 100 with an earnings per share of 346 rupees per share, leading to a price of about 34,651 rupees per share. Now I'm talking 2018 August. Come April 2020, the price to earnings of the company has reduced to 50, while the earnings per share has remained in the same range of about 346, 47 odd rupees per share. Now this has resulted in the stock price coming down by 50% to 17,356 entirely because of PE compression. PE compression means reduction in PE over a period of time. Come to October 2021, the stock is now again trading at a PE of 100, while the earnings per share remains continues to remain in the same range of about 300 odd 50 rupees per share, leading to a price of about 35,000 odd rupees per share. So if you look at the three year returns, the returns have been almost nil. 
we came back to the same price we bought the stock three years ago all due to PE compression and expansion which is the PE from first started at 100 came down to 15 and then again given back to 100 a very good company right but nil returns in three years because our entry was at a very high valuation almost at a PE of about 100 having looked at this example let us now look at the maths in a simple way I am going to discuss four scenarios here where we will talk about movement in price to earnings and EPS earnings per share to see how these four scenarios change and which scenario should we be investing in. Now let's say we have a sample company called XYZ. Now this company has a PE ratio of 20 and earnings of 10 rupees per share. So the current price of the company is about 200 rupees per share. Assuming that this is our entry and we are buying 200 rupees shares of XYZ. Now let's say three years down the line, the PE ratio of this company increases from 20 to 30 and earnings per share increases from 10 to 20. The resultant effect of this is that the stock price is going to increase to 600 odd rupees per share. That means a 3x jump from where we bought the stock three years ago. So in this scenario, both price to earnings ratio and earnings per share have increased over the three year period, giving us a super exciting return of 300% over the three year period. And this is the best case scenario you can imagine for yourself as an investor, where you enter a stock and then both price to earnings and earnings per share increase from their levels to give you stupendous results. Let us now look at the second scenario and here we are assuming the price to earnings to remain as it is. So let's say you have found this company XYZ which, has, which is at a PE of 20 earnings per share of 10 so 200 is your entry price and over a three year period the price to earnings ratio does not change essentially PE remains at 20 but the earnings per share of the company has increased to 20. So now your exit price three years down the line is about 400 rupees. We are talking about a 2x jump in the price of the share. Now these scenarios are most of the scenarios will be something like this where the PE ratio will not move much or we will be range bound but then you will see the company delivering year on year growth in terms of earnings per share. This is the second base scenario, second best scenario you can get into uh, as an investor where you will make returns but not as much as in the first case scenario. Now let's move on to the third scenario. Here we are actually talking about a price to earnings decline which means in this particular case we entered into the stock at a high price to earnings and over a period of time because of mean reversion the ratio has meanly reverted to its long term average of about 10 but the earnings per share have increased from 10 to 20. So the net net effect is that my entry price and my exit price remain the same. I am entering a stock at 200 and three years down the line I am exiting the stock at 200. Essentially this is a scenario where you wouldn't want to get because ultimately this is negative return because of cost of capital. You could have invested this money somewhere else to make at least a 7% or 8% return on that money. So net net, this type of scenario is actually a loss making scenario for you. Now let's get into the fourth scenario, which is the most pessimistic scenario one can think of, wherein the ratio reduces from 20 to 10 and earnings per share also reduces from 10 to 5. Effectively, you entered the stock at 200 rupees per share and exited at 50 rupees per share at a huge loss. Looking at these four scenarios as an investor, you can tell for sure that you want to be in the first two brackets of investing, wherein after you invested, first of all, the company keeps growing its EPS and second, that either the price to earnings ratio remains the same or it increases. You don't want a compression in the price to earnings ratio as an investor, right? So now, if you are entering a company at super high valuation, be very sure that when you are exiting the stock, the earnings growth of the company 
would have exceeded the drop in the price to earning multiple and net net you would be in the money when you are selling the stock in most situations as retail investors we are incapable of predicting what the future is going to be two years to three years down the line as conservative investors we always assume a not so good scenario so anything any growth beyond a 20 25 percent eps is something that becomes very aggressive so if you cannot justify your valuation with a growth rate of about 20 to 25 percent in the eps you are most likely taking the wrong bet by entering into this company at super high valuation what will eventually happen is that you will get logged in into the stock at a top price and over the next two three years the company will get into a consolidation or a correction phase and by the time you get out of the stock you would have already spent two to three years of your investing journey making no money at all in this company try to take companies in com position in companies where there is potential for both the price to earnings ratio and the earnings per share to go up and then you would have cracked investing for yourself on a long term basis now let me talk about two more case studies where valuations have gone up significantly and this is more important in the context of the recent bull run that we've seen in the market because most retail investors usually tend to get attracted into the bull run in the later half of the bull run if you're looking at the screen right now the company is indian energy exchange this company peaked in terms of valuation somewhere mid october when the pe of upwards of 100 and the stock price was 281 since then over the last 4 months the stock has corrected in terms of its, of its price to earnings ratio it has come down to about 70x and similarly the stock price is also corrected now if you look at the lifetime average of iex the pe it is about 32x a similar company in this in the, in the same space has a lifetime average of 35 and this I'm talking about MCX even if there is a re-rating of the stock assuming that IX is a huge is a great company and that it deserves a higher multiple we are only talking about a max to max range of 40 to 50x which means that there is enough correction yet to happen in the stock in terms of, a, of its price to earnings ratio so there is a price to earnings contraction expected in the stock going forward even when the company is expected to perform well in terms of its eps growth the second company that i want to talk about is kpit and there's a buzzword related to electric vehicles associated with this company which is why the stock has run up immensely over the last five six months if you look at the uh, peak valuation of the company which is post of January 2022 it was at a PE of about 90 and a stock price of 745 over the last few days the stock has corrected itself very aggressively and come down to a PE of only 63 now if you look at the lifetime average of this company the PE is somewhere in the range of 15 to 20x well, I could compare this company to TCS as an IT company essentially operating in the same space and the long-term average PE of TCS is about 25x so let's say let's assume that even if the company is great and is going to continue delivery a uh, high growth uh, in both in terms of profitability and revenue and the company gets re-rated we are only talking about a max to max PE range of 25 to 30x so there is enough correction yet to happen in the stock in terms of its price to earnings ratio which means this stock as well will see its price to earnings correct now a lot of retail investors i know entered into kpit and iex and many such companies at super high valuations because there was a lot of buzz in the market talking about these stocks everybody was talking about how these companies have made money for rich investors big investors and the stock has performed so well what eventually ends up happening is retail investors get hooked up or i should say get sucked into these companies at super high valuations listening to all of these stories and news in the market when i end this video i want to talk about how to stay sane during a bull market first point is you can check if the valuation has reached insane levels with respect to its price to earnings with respect to its price to books compare it with the own history of the company and its peers 
and have very solid reason for why the company is trading at such high valuation. In most cases, it is because of herd effect, which means a lot of investors rush to buy the stock uh, and that gives an ideal opportunity for an institutional investor to exit the stock. So basically, you are getting trapped at a high price while the institutional investor takes an exit, making superb returns on his investments. The second that you can, uh, the second activity that you can do is have a PE range in mind. So even before you invest in the company, make sure that you have thought through and have determined a PE range for the company that you want to invest in, right? So let's say for example, that we are looking for a PE range of at least 40 and below to buy Indian Energy Exchange. And so we will stick to that discipline and wait for the PE to come down to 40 and below. Whenever it comes down to 40, we will buy the company aggressively and keep accumulating till then. And in between, we are not going to touch the stock, right? So have that self-discipline. Having a discipline, make sure that you are very conservative in your investing approach and at any point of time in the money, which is in the profit. Also, what you can do is to just, you can have a sense of the future growth rate of the company. So whether 20%, 25%, 30%, 40%, you never know. In some situations, companies also grow 50, 60% year on year for a couple of years. And it is during these times that you can justify a higher valuation, but do make sure that you are certain about the growth in this EPS, because only then you can justify buying a company at a higher PE. Thank you for listening to this video. I'm gonna make a series of videos on mistakes and in investing. So do subscribe and like this.